was the start of the Sierra Leone story. On April 27, 1961, a new nation was born. Its name, Sierra Leone. A former British colony and protectorate, with its more than two and a half million people, it is a land of contrasts, of isolated huts and air-conditioned hotels, of vast savannas and cloud-draped mountains, of tiny riverside settlements and cities like Freetown, which boasts the third largest natural harbor in the world. Hurrying to Freetown, the nation's capital, to celebrate Independence Day, were representatives of 65 nations, and of course, Sierra Leoneans themselves. They were coming to celebrate the day that a promise was kept. A promise by the British to prepare them for independence. A promise by the nation's leader, Sir Milton Augustus Margai, to lead them to independence. Margai! Margai! Sir Milton Margai, 65-year-old physician and graduate of the British University of Durham, was to be the first prime minister of the newly independent country. His foreign minister, the American-educated Dr. John Taffer, was smart, an MD and an ordained minister. Among the first foreign representatives to arrive in Sierra Leone was Prime Minister Balewa of Nigeria and members of his government. Dr. Smart, who had once taught in Nigeria, spotted an old friend of his among the delegates. Sir Maurice Dorman, British colonial governor of Sierra Leone, his wife, and Sir Milton Margai, later greeted the personal representative of the British Crown, the 25-year-old Duke of Kent, cousin of the Queen. The Duke's double assignment was to convey the Queen's personal best wishes to Prime Minister Margai and to transfer the instruments of sovereignty to Sierra Leone. The changing of the colors took place on the night of April 26th. At exactly 11.58 and a half, the light on the British flag was turned on, and the green, white and blue flag of an independent Sierra Leone unfurled for the first time. Later, the dancers started. 1,200 dancers from all 11 major Sierra Leone tribes performed for an audience of 70,000. The next morning, the Sierra Leone Parliament was called into session, and Sir Maurice Dorman took the oath of office as Governor General of the country. As Governor General, he was no longer responsible to the British government, but rather to the representatives of the people of Sierra Leone. the Duke of Kent handed the instruments of sovereignty to Sir Milton Margai. Sierra Leone, the 12th member of the British Commonwealth of Nations, was now officially independent.
British and American Christian missionaries have worked in the colony and the protectorate since the beginning, just as Muslim missionaries have. Christianity came from the sea. Islam, overland from North Africa. Today, the majority of the people are Muslim. Do tensions exist among them? Apparently not. In fact, the encouragement to build Christian mission schools has often come from the Muslims themselves. At a Muslim ceremony on Independence Day, this theme from the Quran was chosen as if to underline the need for cooperation. If ye are grateful, I will increase thee in power, knowledge, and blessing. But if ye are ungrateful, surely my wrath and punishment are severe and tormenting. Although my country is a new country, having its birthday only on the 27th of April, yet this does not mean that we have not been for a long time interested in world affairs. We have not yet had an opportunity to formally pronounce on our foreign policy, but already the Prime Minister has given an indication of the two lines along which it will be built. Governor General Dorman and his thoughts. In the past, Sierra Leone has been a country that has had um, a strong educational background. As far ago as 1826, the uh, University College of Fura Bay was giving higher education to West Africans. Well, now some people may wonder why it is that Sierra Leone is rather uh, later in its approach to independence than Ghana or Nigeria. The answer is twofold. First, our own people have gone down the coast to help Nigeria, Ghana and the Congo during the last century. The uh, first missionary society uh, expedition that went to Nigeria was mounted from Freetown. It included the first African bishop and about 20 African priests from Freetown. Sierra Leone, one more African nation emerging into the bright light of freedom. Proud of its past, hopeful, yes, and determined about its future. A country that remembers the bravery of the emancipated slaves who in 1787 built their homes along the shores of the Mountains of the Lion, Sierra Leone. May we all remember what President Kennedy's representative said to Sir Milton Margai. History has bequeathed on both our nations a common awareness of the rightness of our goals of freedom and brotherhood for all men. With goodwill and God's help, let us forge new bonds of friendship in a common advance towards this high goal.
Money to them, but now we are talking about the country itself. What will be your own contribution towards the development? In this case, for me, we will make the thing very simple. We do plenty now. For me, we will sit down and discuss about that. Therefore, we go shape into three groups, and the groups they go according to the flag. So the people there with the green, then go follow Mr. Abdullah. Mr. Abdullah, you go, you go tin up. We get for we get for point people that really follow this man. If they take one at the other room there, one of those go get 15 minute discussion on this point. What thing go be one your contribution, or what you think? How we get for put this team forward towards the development of your country? And the other person we get for lead the other group name is Marian Kamara. We get for the white group in the Bayanda. And then the other person go be Mr. Maki. I think he did far extreme right, but he's there. He for lead the blue group.